Hi, everybody. Great to have you with us on Yes, We're Here. Once again, Bob Lorenz and Ian Joy with you. And Ian, one thing we love to do when we do these sometimes, we start with breaking news. We've got some great news about some leagues starting up again, more sports coming about. MLS and its players have agreed to a deal to come back on the pitch. Give us some of the juicy details about that. Yeah, first and foremost, it's great to see you, Bob. I love that smile. First thing for me is always a positive thing. Yeah, breaking news out of Major League Soccer. The Players Association just announcing that there has been a deal for the collective bargaining agreement over the next five years. Um, it has been extended for a year, so it will run to 2026. Um, and it now looks like all the players will be getting back onto the field. And it looks like they'll be getting back onto the field quickly within the next three weeks you will see all of the teams traveling to florida for a miniature tournament so sort of a pre-season fitness tournament i think it will all be shown live on television it looks like it's going to take place at the uh, disney the world of sports i think it's a great idea so happy to hear this getting together with major league soccer yeah. The players finally having that agreement, Bob. It just shows us, it gives us all hope, and yeah. the players recognize it. Major League Soccer recognizes it, that sports needs to come back. It's here. With just regard to MLS, isn't it kind of cool to think of what they're going to do, this tournament? It kind of feels like a shootout, right? A fight to the finish. That's exciting for fans. I think they will take anything right now, the fans. They will watch yeah. any type of sport. Whatever they love, they want it back. So if it is soccer fans out there, I think it's a great opportunity for them to see their teams and, and whatever their players playing a, an unusual tournament that wasn't quite expected. Right. But to have all of the teams travel down to Florida, put yeah. them all up into hotels, put them out onto the field for a miniature tournament, it's really cool in a way. It'll be interesting to see how it plays off with families and what type of situation the players are going to be put into. Yeah. Now, interesting kind of symmetry. The NBA appears on the verge with its players to resuming its season. And they're going to do that at the Wide World of Sports Complex as well in Orlando. So you could have two things going on there at once. And you wonder, first and foremost, how that impacts the players if we believe that at least heat can temper some of the coronavirus is going to a place like Orlando, Florida, where it's going to be hot and humid. Will that help them sort of avoid it and stay on the pitch and play these games? Even though it's been very frustrating for all of us who are connected to sports, I'm really impressed that these – I guess federations, these, these organizations have taken their time to come up with an idea. Yeah. So this is a well thought out plan. I mean, they're not just going to Florida for no reason. They're going there for multiple reasons. They have rule books, which the players will have to follow, which families will have to follow, as you just mentioned there, which officials who are officiating the game will have to follow as well. I mean, awesome to see the NBA talking about this potential, having a vote about whether or not it will actually happen. is It looks like it's going to happen in the next 24 hours. I think it's really interesting, but I'm always intrigued for the player's point of view. Because I was a former player, for me, I'm thinking about my family first and foremost. Yeah. Now I'm starting to get the feeling that we're having this safety net. We're okay to come back. We can get back training again. That's step number one. Now there's a sign we can get back competing again. Step number two. Then we can get back into a regular season. Hopefully that we have some playoffs as well. So the hope is certainly out there, Bob. And what's interesting about both the MLS and the NBA, they would be down there for a period of, let's say, six to eight weeks. That seems from a, a quarantine perspective, doable for athletes who need to be away from their families. And if it's Orlando, they'd still be quarantined from their families. Maybe the families go down there and enjoy a little time at Disney World and the surrounding area. Well, I know me and you would like a little trip down to Florida nice. at some point. Huh? Why not? Yeah. I mean, Florida seems like the place to be right now. Yeah. yeah, I think it's pretty good, Bob. I mean, the families obviously recognize this as uh, you know, unknown territory for their players, their husbands, or, or, or obviously right. wives, because obviously we hope that the, the women's games come back as well soon. Um, for me per personally, I think, again, I go back to it. Having a preseason camp, a spring training camp, whatever it is, a fitness camp, you're always three or four, five, six, seven weeks away from your family anyway. You don't get to see your family for such a long period of time. Right. So I recognize that that might be the case again for so many athletes out there. And I think they would be totally fine with that. But what I will say is there will be a lot of rules and regulations that these right. players are going to have to stick by. And that includes being close to their families. I mean, what are their families allowed to do? If families are going to be near them in Florida, Bob, they're yeah. going to have to stick by these regulations as well.
But you talk about the rules and regulations. You know, one of the safeguards I think that's going to be built into a lot of this for every league is if a player has to break away and be with his family, they're going to build those sorts of things in. And I think that's important to say that, well, there's no way you're seeing your family for X number of days or months. They're going to be respectful of that as well. I can guarantee you that most athletes, people who work in the media, like myself and you, our wives are fed up with us. They want <laughs> us out of there for like two or three months. They'd be happy to get rid of us for two or three months. Right. I mean, I think there's going to be obviously an, an interesting idea from the media as well. How are we going to cover these events? That's what intrigues me. But I, I'm just so happy that the rumors are there. We're still waiting for it all to be official, of course. Yeah. But the rumors are out there. The feeling is starting to come back into our bones that sports is yeah. coming back and it's coming back in a big way. And we've talked about this too. All of these leagues that are starting or about to restart, they all can learn from each other. And I think what's interesting is what might happen with Major League Baseball. If and when they restart, they're going to be having to play in a certain area and be quarantined for a longer period of time potentially. So maybe that's part of the challenge for Major League Baseball. And again, rotating players in and out is they're not down in Orlando for six or eight weeks. They're going to be playing probably four or five months that's a big difference to me, but I'm sure Major League Baseball and the Players Association is taking a good look at that. Well, there's no doubt that they're taking a big look at that as well. Not only can they learn from what will happen when athletes do come back from soccer or if it is basketball, I think they will be learning from their training regimes, uh, the protocols put into place for games as well, but also for how these organizations have, have dealt with um, salaries and, and trying to get an agreement in place so that the sport does come back because there's a lot of give and take right now between sports. I mean, to make this deal happen for Major League Soccer, it took so much. It took a long time for the owners to get together and agree and for the Players Association to accept. I mean, for both of them to have that agreement in place, it takes a lot of power. It takes a lot of thinking. And I think overall, the big picture is so important right now. People need sports, Bob. Me and you, we're yeah. fans first before we work yeah. in the media. We need our sports. We want our sports back. All right. Well, let's keep riding this wave of good vibrations, Beach Boys. Feel free to listen to it. <laughs> Bring it up on your, uh, your Spotify or something. Anyway, the good vibrations and the wave ride over to Europe. And we've got La Liga in Spain starting up June 11th. We've got the Premier League back June 17th. We've got Italy Series A coming back as well. So all of these teams have done the things to get in place. And, and again, this tidal wave of, of good feelings really carries over to soccer in Europe. And that's going to satisfy a lot of fans. Oh, so much. I mean, they have also learned from what the German League did do. I mean, the German League being the first big European soccer league to come back. And they've already been back in action for three weeks, Bob. And it's been very, very impressive. The idea they put in place, the protocols, the regulations were all followed. The discipline that was followed, tremendous respect for everyone involved. And I think you're starting to see the leagues you just mentioned there in Italy in Spain and in England all learning from the good and the bad that what happened in Germany. And now they're putting their own idea into place and we are starting to see it come back. I mean, of course, the European soccer season is coming to an end right now. So they, they have the advantage. They only have maybe two months left to play. Right. Here in USA, we want our sports to be going for the rest of this year. And we're yeah. going to be absolutely rammed with sports <laughs> between now and the end of this year. I can't wait, Bob. I'm so excited. Yeah, and the great thing, too, about what's happening over there is, again, these leagues, the Premier League at the end, La Liga, it is going to be more of a shootout, and that will be exciting for fans. And even in Italy, with all the coronavirus problems they've had, they're considering, and I'm not saying they're doing it, having at least some fans in the stands. So that would be sort of another step to see, hey, does that work for stadiums? Yeah, and Italy, as you just mentioned there, they're starting to ease off with the regulations about visitors coming into the country no longer having to go through a 14-day quarantine to just enter the country. So that's huge as well because it's not just about Italians watching their own soccer. It's about the outside public wanting to travel into Italy for vacation, for business, for whatever it may be. So I think uh, we're starting to get that positive feeling that life is getting slowly back to normal. Still a long way to go, yeah. but when you see sports coming back it's very hopeful for everybody everyone can't wait i think we're all excited to get back into it and i think now we're starting to see the light is really there at the end of the tunnel all right let's keep riding this wave of good feelings and good vibrations ian good to see you buddy see you next time always a pleasure